Passover bread that the Israelites made when leaving Egypt had no leaven in it so that it would not spoil and could continue to provide nourishment to them all along the road. Thus it sometimes is called bread for the journey. Of course, manna also sustained them on their journey through the desert. And so did the Torah. So deliciously nourishing was the Word of God that some young Jewish children began to learn the Hebrew alphabet by licking honey placed on each letter so that the Torah should always be sweet on the tongue. The story of Elijah being nourished in the desert beautifully epitomizes the many ways in God which God provides food for the journey. For Christians, Jesus' works and life are bread that we crave. He alone gives us the strength and the courage to be kind, to forgive one another, especially our enemies, to live in love. And oddly enough, we can find this ample nourishment from the Eucharist when we all taste and we all partake of not just the body, but the blood and soul of divinity of Jesus. In our reading from Elijah, we see him emotionally and physically spent and the angel of the Lord nourishes him. He is given bread from the journey. This is what we call viaticum. It's the bread that we give before you die as part of what we might call the last rites or extreme unction. It's the last nourishment before you go to heaven. So, like manna, Passover bread, and the Eucharist, like the Torah and like Jesus himself, who supplies Elijah with the strength and the courage to journey on, so too we receive in viaticum bread for the journey, bread from heaven.